Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, I've had a lot of uh, new subscribers sign up of late. Uh, welcome. Hopefully you enjoy this. Uh, this is part two. I'll link part one above somewhere. Uh, but this is a little experiment to... I had a big discussion with the likes of Dennis Pugh and a few others about extra length off the tee or ex extra club head speed um, will make you a better golfer. And I guess my argument is I don't think it does to the average golfer. Now, I'm not necessarily putting myself into the average bracket because um, I play off scratch or a plus one, depending on what day it is. <clears throat> but I'm trying to say that drive for show, putt for dough still exists and is still true. Um, and the front nine, I kind of was proved, I possibly, I'm basically two under on the ninth hole here at the, oh, this is the 10th hole, sorry, at the players. And uh, this is the back nine. We've got some long holes coming up. Um, I expect really to be one or two under ordinarily. And I'm giving myself an extra 50 yards on every tee shot I hit. Only with a driver. But the 50 yards is not up the middle. It's on the exact line that it was taken off the tee. So if it's gone off to the right of the fairway, it's going another 50 yards. So I've got Cameron Champ's club head speed and carry distance and uh, my normal short game to now. shot that's just a bad tee shot that was all the putt wasn't great either but you know as we're trying to explain here that was three putts that's what cost me there it was nothing to do with an extra 50 yards or not that was pretty much you know a seven are not very close and then three putts anybody can two putt from there you don't have to be a you don't have to be a super athlete or a, a well-trained technician to be able to two putt If you've just watched the first round, I hit quite a fair, I lost quite a few tee shots off to the right, which can become very costly, especially when you're adding 50 yards. But my argument is that if you dollop another 30 or 40, I don't know what handicap you guys are, but let's say you dollop 40 miles an hour onto your club head speed through strength training, and speed training, that could really get you into a mischief. Now I'm not saying don't try and strike the ball better and hit the ball better for more length. Uh, I'm definitely not saying that, that's a great thing to do. But I see all these videos out there on hit the gym, you know, use these special aids to get your, your, your swing speed up to massive speeds. Now that's really good if you're an amazing golfer anyway and you're trying to go from being world number 10 or 20 to possibly world number one. That's, that's slightly different because those boys have got amazing short games and putting as well. So yeah, that added bit of difference would make uh, and, and does seem to make a difference as far as Brody's statistics are concerned. I'm saying that your average golfer, if they hold five more putts around, or even three putted, five times less if you're off 25. That would make a much bigger difference than hitting it 50 yards further. Now 50 yards is a lot. And uh, it's certainly gonna help me on these two par fives if I can keep it straight and there's no real trouble. So up here, definitely. But as we've seen from the first video, Kind of just got me into more trouble than anything else. 
and I'm actually, my stats, I'm a straight hitter, you know. So, goodness knows what you'd do if you hit it offline a little bit, adding 50 yards. Anyway, here I am, I'm in pretty good shape. First tee shot of this nine where I've hit the fairway straight up the middle, so I'm gonna pick it up and go up 50 yards. All right, okay, I'll drop it here. So I had, I'd probably say I had about four on in, and now I've got, let's have a look. And this does feel like a massive difference now I've hit a straight one. Yeah, so I've got 160 yards in. It's like a seven iron. I'm really, I, mean, I don't really like missing greens with four irons, but definitely shouldn't miss a green with a seven iron. Um, so this is par five, could be eagle, should be birdie, let's see. just on the right edge of the green. Wasn't my finest moment, but I've got to say, if I would have hit four on then, I would have missed the green with that swing. But I regard myself as a pretty good, better than average, well, I'd say probably around high tour standard short game with my stats at the minute. Um, so I would expect definitely to get up and down there anyway. So that's not making a big difference to me, if I'm honest. And that was 50 yards there, you know? Anyway. Okay. All right, birdie. I do expect to make birdie there. Birdie. I expect to make birdie there. Sort of eight times out of ten really. So that was a nice advantage, but not a huge one I have to say at this point. <clears throat> and the advantage was I hit hit it bullet straight, so adding the 50 on there with the dispersion was absolutely fine. Anyways, okay, another par five, the 12th. Hopefully we can capitalize on the 50 down here as well. It's a bunker down the left there and with this extra 50 really would help, so I can fly that quite easily from here now. At least my drives are straightening out of it, which is a good sign. It was an early-ish start. It wasn't Robin Matthews Williams early, but, but it was fairly early. I always find those early starts never quite turn as well as I like to and uh, can make me sort of block it to the right a fair bit. But, shouldn't be an excuse, should get up here a bit earlier, hit a few more balls and be ready, like I keep telling to you guys. Anyway, I think when you're a better player, I'm kind of able to manage it slightly better, um, you know, taking a little bit more club and uh, looking out for knowing you know, those uh, differences between feeling sort of fairly quick and, and not. Okay, so that one took a bit of a kick to the right. Um, normally off of this mound, it kicks to the left and I'm always trying to steer away from this bunker. And normally it won't go into this patch here. But today I'm here, I'm gonna have to pick it up and on this line, we're straight at that. So I'll give it 50 and hope we get through. Okay, we're here. That's all right. Right then, I'm sure that it would have been in that, but because I, I didn't really say about roll, did I, with those 50 yards. Let's just say it was a really high one and it pitched here, and we'll go with that for the 50 yards for this exercise. Got 200 yards, but it's down a slope, so I'm just gonna hit a four iron. Bit of tree problem, but 
I should be able to just cut it around there a little bit. out the toe nice little selection of baddies there but I think it's all right in fairness um, back where I was I would have had I'd have probably had a wood in it would have been oh I don't know two two thirty or something like that um, it's one of those holes that is a big advantage here 50 yards I'm not sure I've taken advantage of it but because where I've hit that I've just missed the green to the left a little bit I didn't put my best swing on it but I think I'd have probably been the same with the three. We're just down there somewhere around the green. No big deal. Anyway, see where we are. Right, I've got no clues how it's... As you can see, I've come down over here and somehow, there's the flag, cut a bit tight there. And somehow, I'm here. No clues. It must have maybe run round the edge of this bunker, perhaps. I don't know, and got there, but... It's a tricky one with the camera, so I'll put you behind the flag. You get the idea there. We've got a big bunker to hit over. I was kind of hoping I was in that bunker, but... Uh, well, I have to try and do some sort of weird lob type affair. If you want to learn how to do these shots, there's a, I'll put a link above. Right. about five out of ten still a chance for birdie but caught that a little bit heavy then now that would be annoying <laughs> I feel like we got away with it with a tee shot just over those trees but um, should have made birdie four there. But it's a five, I think. Um, I think three under at the minute. Lovely par three next. The 13th here at the players. Really nice hole. Um, that's a lovely hole. It's got some water and some really saucy little pin positions for competition rounds. They hold the uh, European Tour qualifying school uh, stage two, I think it is here. Or is it stage one? One of them. And uh, all sorts of fun events. It's a good course. They can stretch it out to 7,000, I think five or 600 yards. Proper long course. Good to see. Right, par three. We're on a bit of a forward tee here. I'd like to sneak on the back here, but don't do that at home, kids. <laughs> Um, I do get permission from the owner of the club to play off the back tees um, with uh, when I'm hitting woods off tees, you know, but obviously when you're playing on a par three, you're actually going to make damage with divots and stuff, so. Fair enough, no worries. Makes it easier for me. Okay, 135, 138, 9 iron. Just hold it straight. Pins on the back, so I don't want to chase it too hard, because a bit long is not good. Pretty good. Oh, okay, birdie. But that wasn't down to a tee shot. <laughs> um, so that's, that's one, two, three. That's four under. Okay. But we got some tr tricky ones coming up. Okay, here's the ball. Now, this one's awkward because the tee is back there and my ball was heading to the right of the fairway. I'm not sure you can see it now, but it was pretty much on this line, which is heading kind of away from the green. It doesn't look like very much. And the way I've hit it, it's fine, we're on the fairway. Uh, it's a lovely tee shot and I've got a nice kind of six iron into the green. This is a tough hole, but 
I'm, I'm counting on that 50 yards going towards that tree. So, one, two, three, four, six, seven, and we're in here. Great. So, keeping my ball that was on the fairway uh, in line with the um, the T, so you go for the T through my ball. It was on this angle, even though I was on the fairway, but that extra 50 yards has put me in here, which means I now have to take a two club drop, which I'll do. Yeah. I'll guess that, and I'm just gonna take it out sideways, no nearer the hole, about here. Okay. All right, so now we're playing three again. Okay, so 155, eight iron, third shot. I hit that nice, it slips a little bit, but uh, that's in pretty good shape, I think. Okay, so after all that, I've carried the flag a bit. I mean, it was 155, it flew quite a bit gone in the back bunker there so <clears throat> now I'm struggling struggling now after that drop out so here we get on okay kind of got away with a bogey there but uh Well look, my short game saves us again. You know that's another one putt down. I don't know. I just think, I just think that if an elite player didn't have a short game, they would just be very average. And that's my argument, really. I mean, the Dennis Puzis would have taken for granted that these guys are amazing putters and chippers to start with. Well, most people aren't. Most weekend golfers, you know, they probably get up and down, I don't know, one in 10 or something. But, you know, I think that's got to be taken into consideration. Yeah, sure, when you're telling Molinari, but I mean, he's got an amazing short game, so there you go. Right, I can't hit a driver down here, just gonna hit an iron. So, uh, so what do you think? Write in the comments down below. Would you rather have um, 30 to 50 extra yards on your tee shots or five extra putts? The reason why we say that us uh, kind of YouTubers, write in the comments down below, a couple of things. One, it's really nice to hear from you. And I think that's kind of, with my channel, the more important thing. It's nice when I put a video up to get some feedback and um, if I can help any of you guys out anywhere I can, I would love to. So some sort of feedback would be really nice if you've tried a few of these exercises and decided it works, it'd be nice to hear, or maybe it hasn't worked. That's fine as well. And the other thing is the YouTube algorithm, which, you know, more comments equals you get uh, pushed higher up the ratings and you get recommended to more people, so that helps as well. So. Uh, if you've got the time, comment down below, just with like a thumbs up or anything you like. Or ask me a question, I'll answer it almost straight away because the channel's still quite small. Although we are growing, guys. Thanks very much. It's nice to see all your lovely smiling faces once a week, at least. Um, but yeah, any sort of comment and uh, I'll reply as soon as I can. Right, so we're right down the middle on this one. I'm not hitting I'm not putting an extra 50 yards on this because I only hit an iron and you wouldn't do it anyway here. So it's only fair. In fact, I've only got one driver left to take advantage of that. Oh well. But uh, we are now, I think we're back to two under, I think. Or was I four and back to three? I'll check it out later. I've forgotten to be honest. Part five though, here we go. Did you see the start of last week's vid? 
That wasn't supposed to be some fancy shot. I skimmed it from over here. I hit it straight out the bottom and it, it bounced on this lake three times and then hopped into the middle of the fairway. <laughs> if you've got a big screen, go back and look at that. It's the first five seconds. You don't have to watch it all. But uh, it skimmed across there brilliantly. When I put it onto my big screen, uh, I could see it, which was amazing. Anyway, I'm just going to pad a five iron down there to leave myself a nice wedge into this par five. Going for the green in two is not worth it here. We've got gorse bushes all up the left. We've got a bunker just short on the carry distance. And to be honest, if you're around this green, it's a hard chip and put anywhere. I'd rather have a fuller shot and have a little bit more control into the, uh, you know, if you hit a good shot, you know it's going to stop. That's fine, that's middle of the fairway. Let's see if we can hit a half decent wedge. I always like doing a little chat around this area. Yeah, on the 15th, it's lovely to see the uh, 16th green there and uh, the water, it's beautiful. And it's a lovely day today. And I'm in a good position to possibly make a birdie up here. We'll see, it's a tricky one, the green's tricky. So um, Dennis Pugh's parting gift from the uh, Twitter debate, which was, drive for show, putt for dough, is a fallacy, and nobody should actually think that way. It's the exact opposite. And I completely don't agree. Put below if you agree with him or me. Be interesting to see what everybody thinks. I asked uh, Georgina Hall uh, through Jazzy Golf, as she was doing an interview with her, and I said, would you rather have three extra putts go in or would you like to have 30 yards on your tee shots? And she looked at it really strange, like it was a stupid question. And she said, well, three extra putts around. Because three extra putts around is 12 extra shots a tournament. And if, you, if she's five under and you take off 12 shots, you're talking 17 under. You know, she'd win pretty much every, you know, event she went out there. So, and I'm t I tend to believe in that. I just think that when you get back in after your round, no matter how good or bad you've been, if you just slammed five putts off or even three putts, it can make a big difference. His passing shot was, a good putter doesn't hold all putts, but a good drive, uh, you know, a long drive of the ball never loses distance. And that's my exact kind of, I guess, argument with it, because that is the problem with long drivers, is they have that extra distance. And as I've shown today, gets you into all sorts of trouble. And when you hit it miles down the middle, yeah, you can make some birdies, but you've still got to make those putts. Par fives, fair enough. You can get up closer and you can two putt, which, you know, you could give yourself, say, if there's four par fives on your course, you could probably give yourself three birdies. But then you've still got all the other holes where if you miss even a six footer, five footer, four footer, you're instantly dropping a shot. Whereas when you hit a long tee shot slightly offline with that speed, it's gone, it's a lost ball. And then you've still got to look at the putt. Anyway, we've got 90 yards, I'm in a good position, but when you uh, move it to the side, because this was on the fairway, but we're still not playing on a couple of the fairways, this is one of them, so I move it off to one side. It gets even more and more hilly. Now when you're on a slope in line like this, you'll be amazed how many times you pull it left. So don't worry about the theory. There's a lot of in-depth theory that, forget about all that. Just aim probably 20% to the right of what you thought, depending on the slope. Obviously, the longer the club, the more you would go. But for this one, I'm gonna aim probably 15 feet to the right. So that one stayed right. It happens. After all my chat about it going left, and I just completely blocked it. That is a shocker. That's a terrible putt, wasn't it? I putted, so it just shows what golf's like. Putted so well this morning, and now this afternoon, can't get the weight at all. There, didn't it? Whoa. That was lucky. 
save my five. 155 yards. It's going to hold because it's got a bit of a drop, so I'm going to hold a little seven out. Little bit long. It's another, another pretty hole, isn't it? So you tee off up there, which you saw me a second ago, and uh, got a bunker and water. And the water comes into play when they put the flag a little bit further over there. But as you can see, I'm a little bit long. So guess what? It's down to the putting again. How much break did I think that had? That was a shocker, wasn't it? <laughs> Not too bad in the end, good three. But, I mean, that was a terrible first part. I bet that's going to look terrible on the camera. <laughs> it's amazing how bad. We're so used to watching the tour players putting and just missing here and just missing there. Uh, when, when you record yourself out there on the course. And I consider myself quite a good putter. <laughs> Those wide ones just look ugly, don't they? Oh my God, that one just looked miles left. It was bad from where I was, but I bet that's gonna look terrible. Anyway, um, okay, so I'm gonna play off the back tee here. I'm gonna hit driver. It shouldn't really, I don't know really. I guess with an extra 50 yards, the green is on. Um, you know, I think you've got to go for it. Use, use your weapon, you know. If you've got 140 mile an hour swing speed, use it, you know. It's no good just hitting a three iron, because if you hit a three iron, I'm tempted to say that my driver would be as accurate as most of those guys' three irons, you know. Okay, this should be a laugh. Come on, Cameron. Give it some. Right, that one wasn't too bad. It was a little bit off to the right again. Uh, got those back on again now for some reason. But add 50 to that and it's lost, I think, again. Right, I've got mowers everywhere. Okay, so I'll fit it to here. Not great, not the greatest of uh, shots for me, but as you can see here, I've got a nice simple, I'm even around the edge of the bunker there. Nice simple tee shot in, maybe 70 yards, perfect. I mean, I would get up and down here, five out of 10, maybe more. But on the line from the tee that it was heading, we're going over there 50 yards. So. Eight, nine, 50. Okay, well I'll be lenient and I'll drop it here. Uh, okay, so now, I don't think I've got any swing restrictions from this, but look what I've got now. Now I know some of you are gonna say, yeah, but you should have hit a three iron or something. <clears throat> Well, I don't think so, because I had a, a shot at the green. Um, and, you know, if I'd have hit a good shot, I'd probably got on there with that 50 yards. Two putts for eagle. So this is the right choice. I was swinging it. My sort of meager, like, 110 swing speed. And I was okay. But then add 20 mile an hour onto that. And we're pretty much nearly in this. Anyway, let's see. I've got a bunker right in between, right in, in the way between me and the flag, and the flag. I've got no room and a crappy leg. Don't know where, where best to put you here. You guys are hanging in a tree. There we go, hopefully you can see it. I've got no, I can't really go for the flag, I'm just going to try and hit the green. Out to the right, I hope it comes round. I think that's the shot. It's not the greatest of lives. <clears throat> It's 
kind of about right. Oops. I thought that was alright, Pat. Should have taken the flag out, shouldn't I? Look at this guy doing his stuff. <laughs> doing his thing. <laughs> See those guys are great. You got you gotta love the greenkeepers man. They work so relentlessly. Cause grass is always growing. You know? Oh well. Good boys. They're good. Drop shot. But I would have been putting that for birdie if I'd have taken my shot. I'd have been putting that for birdie if I'd have taken my shot. But that was a drop shot as it was. Those extra 50 didn't help a bean. They should help up here though. So I can get up to the green. That's up. That's probably on the green now. Um, so if you really want to kind of have a, a fully immersive experience of this round, and actually all my rounds, um, I use a system called Arcos. I'll do a link somewhere. I, I reviewed it, but um, I really love it for collecting stats and helping all sorts of things. Watch the video if you like. But if you've got it already, um, just connect to me. Uh, look for me. I think I'm just... Uh, probably Stuart Carter Smith or S Carter Smith or SJ Carter Smith one of the one of the ones and um, you can have a look at all my shots all my rounds from last season all my medal rounds and uh, you can see my uh, how far I hit the ball what my handicap is on our cars and uh, all those sort of good stuff ratings maybe you compare yourself against me or uh, maybe just look at you know what I expect to do, get up and down wise, etc. But uh, yeah, hop along, connect up, and once we're connected, I can watch you as well, which I'd like. Anyway, so here we are. We are 50 yards onto this. We're on the green. This has made a difference up here, hasn't it? You know, I probably my up and down rates from here are. Ooh, I don't know, what would it be? Well, I tell you what, I'll show you, I'll hit two balls. I'll hit one from here, and then I'll hit one from actually on the green, because I think 50 yards, I'm gonna have a really long hard putt. Let's give it a go, just for a bit of fun, as it's the last hole. Straightforward shot, I think. It's on the front edge of the green now, so. Okay, I want my best. Well, it's all right. You know, I mean, it's holdable. And, um, oh, I better pace this out. Five, six, seven. And the other ball. Grab a ball. Okay, I've added my 50, 50 extra yards. And it was straight, it was straight up the middle. And it's got me to the, uh, the back of the green, but it's a long putt. And that's my little chip onto there, which is probably as bad as I could have done it, but it's still okay. I'll do this one first and see how we get on. <clears throat> Tough part this though. I know, I know, that looked horrendous. But that was a hard part down that slope and this isn't much easier. would go and do that, wouldn't I? Yeah. Ha. 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 Okay, so, what do you think then? Is, are there two ways to catch a rat? 
um, which one's better. I know all the stats say, I know what Brody's saying, I know what everybody is saying, but for the average golfer and not the tour player, what do you think? I mean, looking back on this round, what would you say was the difference? I mean, from what I can feel, I feel like I hold quite a lot of putts on the first, on the front nine. I feel like the birdies I got, I kind of would have got anyway, if my putting continued to be okay. The drop shots were definitely from the long, the long offline ones. Like, I don't think I've had, I don't think I've had a penalty shot all last year. I don't really hit it too much into the, into the deep stuff. I probably had one or two, but I can't remember many. I'll have to look. So what do you think, you know, looking at it? I think, I think the way to a lower score for the average golfer is working on the short game. It's an easy fix. As long as you can hit it a couple hundred yards off the tee, not 350, just a couple hundred yards, keep it straight, chip and putt, and you can get down to two or three handicap. <laughs> That's what I reckon. Anyway, let me know what you think. What would you prefer? Do you just like hitting it a long way because it's fun? And it is fun, I do agree with you. Um, or do you like being sat in the clubhouse with the lowest score? I guess the jury's still out. But thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Give me a like and a subscribe. Hit the little bell button and it will notify you of my videos. But they're out every week, so uh, you'll know where to find us. I'll see you later. Cheers, guys.